Duelist Sid is I Hell here, and this is my Rose Dragon deck profile for post maximum gold El Dorado. I would have posted this on Lightning Overdrive when all the new stuff came out, but I didn't have it. And while getting the rest of the pieces and deck testing, our girl here got the gold standard. So I figured now would be a good time to put up this DP for everybody. Very fun deck of Akiza Signature Monster. And I hope you enjoy this build. It's going to be interesting to see what updates I can make for this come ban list time. But uh, ban list ain't out yet, so time will tell. Like, sub, and bell as always, everyone. And let's count those cards. Man, I'm, I'm so excited. Funny thing is, I lost this deck like a couple of years ago, and then, because I dropped one of my cards, I actually found this deck again, and I was like, yep, let's upgrade this stuff now. So we'll begin with two of uh, the White Rose Dragon. Uh, let me zoom the camera out a bit more. There we go. So. Two copies of White Rose Dragon. On normal summon, you can special summon a Rose Dragon from your hand, which is a really nice way. It's an ex it's an extender. Oh, hand or graveyard, excuse me. And then it has two effects that you can use once per turn. If you control a dragon or plant tuner, you can special summon this card from the hand, which makes it a nice extender again. And if it's used as synchro material, you can send a level 4 or higher plant from deck to hand. Back in the old days, you could use Giga Plant with this, but we don't play Giga Plant anymore. Next up, we have three copies of Red Rose Dragon. Red Rose Dragon also has a sweet little effect if it's sent from or if it's sent to the graveyard as synchro material. There you go. Allow you to get either a Blooming of the Dark Rose Trap or a Frozen Rose Spell from your deck to your hand if it is used for, what is it? For a Black Rose Dragon or a Plant Synchro Monster. Other than that, if sent to the, oh yeah, I just said that, Jesus. Where is my other effect? Mm, mm, mm. Oh, well, yeah, it gets you a Rose Dragon monster if it's just used as synchro material, plain period. But the extra ads are for those specific ones. Ooh, we got two of Rock's Rose Dragon. This is one of the newer dragons here. On summon this lets you add a basil rose shoot spell card from <laughs> well you ideally want to add basil rose shoot but it lets you add any card from deck to hand that specifically lists black rose dragon in its text. text. <clears throat> Red rose dragon also has this issue. Well I mean you know Black Rose Dragon in its text. Just can't row to another copy of Rock's Rose. Some people play this at three, by the way, but I like the two. It's pretty decent. If a face of Rose Dragon monsters or plant synchro monsters you control be destroyed by battle or opponent's card effect, you can add this card to your hand. And once per turn. The dark horse of the family is Blue Rose Dragon. I do like this. I still have my secret rare version of this card. Thank you, Legendary Duelist 4, for reprinting this as a common. Like the Red Rose Dragon, the Blue Rose Dragon also lists Black Rose Dragon specifically in its text. Upon death, it can special summon a Black Rose Dragon from Grave or a Plant Monster. Just remember, you got to properly summon the Black Rose Dragon. 
Next up is an interesting bit of tech here, folks. We have our Blood Rose Dragon. Uh, yeah, can, can, Konami, you guys are chumps for letting Scooby-Doo name these cards. All right? You only need one of these next couple of cards because they work very well together. You can tribute this card and add one which of the black rows from deck to your hand and then place a level three plant on the top of your deck. Then you could normal summon the witch of the black rose. You can banish this card from your graveyard and return a black rose dragon or blood rose dragon that is banished or in your graveyard to your extra deck once per turn. Now, this combos very well because you can summon Blood Rose. And, and here's the thing. I use a Japanese name, but you could have spelled this Konami like B-L-U-D for Blood Rose like you did the Gemini Monster Ill Blood. I digress. But the play is you summon Blood Rose Dragon, tribute it. Then you get the Witch of the Black Rose, and then a level 3 plant, which in this next case will be Rose Fairy, which I'll talk about momentarily. Let's move these cards over a little bit, get everybody in frame comfortably. You normal summon the Witch of the Black Rose, which if it's the only card you control, you reveal the top monster off the top of your... You reveal the top card off your deck. If it's a monster, it's added to your hand. If not... Black Rose Witch self-destructs. Now, what's great about it is the tech in Rose Fairy. If it's added to your hand by card effect, you can special summon it. So, if you have this play, you can essentially go into this and boom. And there you go. Another tech that you can add with Witch of the Black Rose and the Witch of the Blood Rose is the level 3 Rose Girl, which is a tuner. I don't have needle fiber, folks. And that's the big, that's the sweetest tech of this with the, with the Witches of Blood and Black Rose. You go into these two because both of the, of the Rose Witches are tuners even though one is plant and one is spellcaster. If a face-up plant monster you control is sent to the graveyard outside of damage step, you can special summon this card from your hand. If a plant monster is on the field and uh, this is cards in the graveyard, you can add this card to your hand. If it's, I believe if it's sent to the graveyard, Jesus. Light is not my best friend today. I really am tired. Either way, you can only use one of those effects per turn. Woo! Yeah, I'm tired. I apologize for this one, folks. There's so much to do in so little time in my days. Oddly enough, in my Rose Dragon deck, I run a small Predator Plant engine. Which consists of... One Preda plant, Spinodia Naya. Yes, I can say these Latin words. Two copies of Preda plant, Ofri Scorpio. And one Darlingtonia Cobra. So, like most Preda plant monsters, Spinodia Naya can take one of your opponent's monsters, give it a counter, and if its level is... <laughs> Higher than two, it lowers it to one. And when Spinodia Naya destroys a monster your opponent controls whose level is equal to itself, which is four or lower, you special summon another Preda Plant monster from your deck. Ofri Scorpio and Darling Tony and Cobra really don't need much of an introduction. These are the old school fusion engine that people would use. You know, you'd summon Ofri Scorpio off of a Preda plant, pitch a monster, 
pool darling Tony and Cobra, who once per duel, when it's special summoned by the Pred monsters, adds a fusion spell from deck to hand. One of the funnest things I like to do with these three is swing at my opponent with Spinodia Naya during battle phase, summon the Ofri Scorpio, pitch the monster, summon Darling Tony and Cobra, and then pull Fusion. Since it's still the battle phase, I can then swing with Ofri Scorpio and Darling Tony and Cobra if the monsters are weak enough or non-existent. Then, go into the fusion play and swing with the fusion summon monster. It's so good, man. Three copies of Lone Fire Blossom. This is the only plant-based deck that I have three of these. You tribute one, special summon a plant from Grave. Usually, it's the, we give this the Thunder Dragon treatment. World Carrot Wave Champion can bring itself back from the graveyard by contributing a plant you control and then of course there's Spore which is the go-to tuner of plant decks alright spell game we know how these work we don't need to explain these I run one black garden one of the synchro monsters actually searches this out and one is all you need if you play it at all. Monsters summon while this card is out, outside of its summoning effect, have their attack halved permanently. Then a rose counter is special summoned to the opponent's field in attack position. You can also use its effect where you either, what is this, how does this work again? Of course. Target a monster you in your graveyard with attack equal to the total attack of all plant monsters on the field. Destroy this card and all plant monsters on the field. And if you do destroy all the plants, you special summon the monster with its attack not cut in half, mind you. The main field spell you play is White Rose Cloister, which once per turn can let you special summon a rose dragon or plant monster from your hand. Once per turn before you draw you can declare a card type. Then you reveal that card. If it's the right card that you call, level 7 or higher synchro monsters you control gain a thousand attack for the turn. You don't call it often but it is a nice way to boost up your synchros. As I mentioned before with Rox Rose Dragon, Basil Rose Shoot. This card essentially revives your Rose Dragons. <laughs> it can also be banished to bring one back once per turn. Remember I was talking to you guys about Red Rose Dragon being Frozen Rose? Well, this is Frozen Rose. It has two effects that you can use one of in a turn. And remember, this is an O. You send a face-up monster to the graveyard. If it's a plant, you draw two cards during your end phase, then discard one. So it's like a low-rent graceful charity. And if it's a non-plant, you wrote a level 4 lower plant to hand. I may cut out Allure of Darkness at a later date because it's draw power and Frozen Roses also draw power. Super Polly. Going back to the Predaplant play with Spinodia Naya, Ofri Scorpio, and Darling Tonia Cobra. You essentially... Swing, Scorpio, Pitch, Cobra, Swing with Scorpio, Swing with Cobra, Use Super Poly, and go into Fusion. It's Spell Speed 4, so of course you got the good stuff. I also play a copy of Ultra Polymerization in this deck. I know a lot of Rose Dragon decks are playing Instant Fusion instead of this, and personally I think it's the bad call. Like Super Poly, it is spell speed 4. You pay 2 racks and you fusion summon. Then, 
you can banish the scar from the graveyard, get back the fusion materials with their effects negated. And I believe they're stripped of attack points? Yes, attack and defense. Which is really good. I really need to change this to Raigeki at some point in time. <laughs> but I do like Lightning Vortex because uh, for some reason, Cross Out Designator can't really chain off of this because most people are playing Raigeki. Then we got the back row hate. <laughs> Trap game. Two walls of thorns. This is essentially is mirror force if your opponent attacks one of your plant monsters. They have to attack a plant monster for this to act like mirror force. So if you have one of your dragons out and they swing at the dragon, you can't trigger this for mirror force. And then two copies of Polygnosis. Essentially, it's Solemn Judgment, but instead of paying half your life, you just tribute a plant you control. And that's going to wrap up the main. The main booty of this deck. And now, the extra deck game. Starving Venom Fusion Dragon is one of the super pol well, one of my fusion targets. We all know how this card is. We all know how it works. A lot of people play with Starving Venom. One copy of Preta Plant Chimera Flesia. This card is some nasty business. And I love fusing this thing. Once per turn, she can target one of your opponent's monsters and banishes it. And if it's involved in battle, it strips the attacking target of 1,000 attack points. Which, that's some cold work, man. Two copies of our girl, Black Rose Dragon. We all know how she works, but to those of you who need the reminder, she nukes the field on Synchro Summon, and she can once per turn banish a plant in your graveyard, switch an opponent's monster into attack position, and strip it of its attack points. It's too bad Black Rose Moonlit Dragon isn't considered as a Rose Dragon, but it is a good card to play for bounces. And then there's the Blood Rose. This card is expensive. Thanks. No thanks, Sword Soul. If this card is Synchro Summon, you can banish all cards in the graveyards. That is yours and your opponent's graveyard. If this was Synchro Summon using a plant Synchro Monster or Black Rose Dragon, you can destroy all other cards on the field. So... If you go into Black Rose, and then you take like Rocks Rose and go into Blood Rose, not only are you nuking the graveyard, but you're also nuking the field. And that double nuke is just some nasty business. When your opponents act when your opponent activates a card effect that would destroy a card, quick effect, tribute this card to negate. And special summon a Black Rose Dragon from your extra deck or graveyard. So, even if you don't wipe out the graveyards, you can bring back <laughs> our Black Rose and then do some more Wampin. Garden Rose Maiden is the Synchro monster that I was talking about that actually brings out the Black Garden. So, you can also banish this card from your graveyard, then target a Rose Dragon monster or Dragon Synchro monster in your graveyard and special summon it once per turn. The low rent version that came out of King's Court is Garden Rose Flora. This is also a nice alternative for this deck if you don't have Maiden. 
Maiden. Target a card in the field zone and destroy it. Then special summon to its controller's field one Rose Dragon. Oh, sorry, excuse me, Rose Token. In attack position. Also, you cannot special summon on the extra deck for the rest of the turn except Synchros. So, the lock of the Synchros isn't really that bad. Especially where you can Synchro Climb into this as it is also a tuner. And, of course, that is a once per turn. Also, once per turn... Oh, excuse me. Once per chain during your opponent's main phase as a quick effect, immediately after this card is effects resolve, Synchro Summon it with the monsters you control. And that can get you into... <laughs> Crystal Wing, which is a good negate. One Splendid Rose. This is the this is actually a fun level seven. Oh wait, this isn't a level seven, it's a level six. Jesus, I am tired. It has two once per turn effects. Banish a plant monster from your graveyard to have the attack of a face-up monster your opponent controls until the end of the turn. If this card attacks attacks during the same battle phase, you can banish a plant monster to have its attack, and she can attack again. Trishu! Trishu! <laughs> Getting the cards out for this is so... Oh, it's so good to pull Trish out of this deck. I don't have Needle Fiber, but... I do have Crossroads Dragon, which can tribute a plant while it's on the field and Synchro Summon a Synchro Monster, which is treated as a Synchro Summon. If a monster you control is destroyed by card effect while this card is in the graveyard outside of damage, banish it to Special Summon a Rose Dragon from your graveyard. Each of these effects are once per turn. I have a cross sheet because the synchro boost that works with it is really good. Aroma Seraphy Jasmine, which is $20 and something now. If you don't have Aroma Seraphy Jasmine, wait till we get that Sylvan link to and use it instead. And lastly, one Bengal and Sir, the Resurgent for the bounce and all that other stuff. There's a lot of our link twos that can equal four that you can go into for this deck. I rarely go into Bangalancer the Resurgent in this deck. Mostly I stick to the Rose Dragons. But that is it for this Rose Dragon deck profile. Hopefully when the ban list comes up and they do make some nice changes, I'll be able to make an even more interesting Rose Dragon deck, which hopefully I can get a needle fiber by then. Raise your thumbs if you've enjoyed this one. Now let me take my cards to the box because I'm done. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye.